morning everybody english traveler 5 revision unit 1 and 2 in this lesson you will be able to use the appropriate tense for each situation use nouns quantifiers and articles correctly write an email based on a prompt and write a, an essay describing a place so in this lesson we will go to revise all these topics together remember you have to go to your book page 88 90 here you will find a full explanation for the rules of this module more than this you can go back and watch the previous episodes we already discover we already discussed these topics in details present simple present progressive this is the first exercise we will do then we will do more exercises about present perfect and present perfect progressive then nouns and finally articles let's start with the present simple and present progressive put the verb into the correct tense simple present or present progressive first let's differentiate between the present simple and present progressive do you remember yes present simple for the daily routines for uh, facts and habits while progressive we are discussing or talking or expressing actions that happening now or around now again go back to the previous episodes you will find a full explanations for these two tenses okay number one look he leave the house so from the word look we can notice that he is talking about something in front of him so is it present simple or a progressive yes good job for sure it's something progressive because it's happening now he okay can you tell me what's the rule for present progressive we need subject after the subject we need a helping verb like is are or am then we will add ing to the verb let's check together good job luck he is leaving the house leaving we delete the e then add the ing he is leaving the suitable helping verb for he is quite please i write a test quite please so we are talking about something happening now which is write a test so it's present progressive again what is the rule subject then helping verb then verb the main verb and we will add ing to the main verb so what is the suitable helping verb for i good job am i am writing i am writing he often go to the cinema okay often this word tell us it's one of his habit or routine so we will go with the present simple can you remember do you remember or can you tell me what's the rule for present simple yes subject then the verb okay and if the subject is he she it or any singular pronoun we will add s to the verb go goes right writes leave leaves okay let's check excellent he often goes to the cinema and please notice that we add es because when the verb ends with o we have to add es not just s goes she usually walk to school she usually walk to school from the word usually is it present simple or progressive yes for sure it's present simple daily routine or habit so walks she usually walks to school but uh, sorry but look today she drive her car okay this is something happening now it's not her routine okay something happening now look okay so present a progressive after she will add the holding verb then the 
main verb with ing. That's a trick. Excellent. Great job. Today, she is driving her car. Again, when the verb, main verb, end with E, we have to delete E, then add the I-N-G. Every Sunday, we go to see my grandparents. Every Sunday. So, this is the routine of the Sundays. Okay? So, it's present simple. We go. Every Sunday, we go to see my grandparents. Okay. The child seldom cry. Child, singular. Seldom tell us that we are talking about simple present. Okay. Uh, adverb of frequency like seldom, always, usually, often, always come with the present simple or simple present. So the child cries. Notice that we delete the Y letter, then add I, E, S, cries. Because the, chi the child is singular. The child, singular, children, plural. I not do anything at the moment. So here, he wants you to make the sentence negative. Okay, first of all, we have to decide. Is it present simple or present progressive? Anything at the moment. At the moment means now. So, present progressive. So, we will add ing to the verb. Do, doing. What about the helping verb with I? Yes, good job. Am. I am not doing. Let's check together. Excellent. I am not doing anything at the moment. Okay. Watch he the new regularly. Watch he the news regularly. So, here he wants you to make a question. Do you notice the question mark? Okay. Is the sentence here in the present simple or present progressive? For me, regularly. Yes, it's a present simple habit, routine. So, what is the suitable helping verb for a present simple to make a question? Yes, do and does. But with he, we will choose does. Excellent. Does he watch? That's a check. Excellent. Does he watch the news regularly? And notice it's watch. Does he watch? Not does he watches because we have does already. Okay, I hope you get it. Now let's move. Let's move to another grammar rule, which is a present perfect and present perfect progressive. As we know that perfect tenses used to express actions happened in the past, but there is no specific time for them. Okay, what's the difference between the present perfect and present perfect progressive? Present perfect always express the, uh, the result of the action, while present perfect progressive express the duration of this action. Okay, Lucy ran 2,000 meter today. So this is the result. She or Lucy ran 2,000 meter today. So is this present perfect or uh, present perfect continuous? Yes, for sure this is a present perfect because it's a result. Lucy has 2,000, has run 2,000 meter. Run, run, run. I clean all morning. I am fed up. So, here we are talking about the duration all the morning. So, can you tell me what is the rule for present perfect progressive? Subject, after the subject, has or ha, then been, then the verb with I in G. I have been cleaning all morning. I am fed up. He worked in this company since 1985. Okay, here, are we talking about the result, the work or the duration since 1985? Yes, we are talking about the duration. Excellent. So, we will go with the present perfect continuous. He, the subject, has, then been, then verb with ing. Hi, he has been working. 
how many times you take this exam. Okay, here the question is how many? Are we asking about quantity or duration? How many? One, two, three, four. Result. You are repeating something. Okay, so how many times it means we are talking about present perfect, not continuous. Excellent. How many times have you taken this exam? Mary live in Germany since 1992. Yes, yes. It's duration. So we will go with the present perfect continuous. Mary then has then been. Then the verb with ing. Mary has been living in Germany. Again, look at live. It ends with e. So when we add ing, we have to delete e, then put ing, living. He eat six parts of a chocolate today. Okay, quantity, result. So present perfect, present perfect, simple. He has eaten, he has eaten the subject. Then the verb in the third conjugation or past participle, eaten, eat, ate, eaten. I wait for you since two o'clock. So, again and again, duration. We will go with the present perfect progressive or present perfect continuous. I have been waiting for you since two o'clock. The student finished their exam. They are very happy. What's the result here? They finished their exam, so they are very happy. Are we talking here about duration, period? No, just the result. They finish. So we will go with the present perfect, simple, present perfect. The student have finished, have finished their exam. Why is he so tired? She is asking, why is he so tired? He played tennis for five hours, five hours. So here we are talking about duration, five hours. So it means we are talking about, as I said, duration. So we will go with the present perfect continuous. He has been playing tennis for five hours. And by this, we end the present perfect and present perfect continuous. Now we go to the articles. First, do you remember what do we mean by the articles when we are talking about grammar exercise? Yes, articles means a, an, or the. And they are coming before the noun, not the verbs, noun. Okay, but they have some rules and we have to practice uh, more exercise to be to be so familiar with them. Choose a, an, the, or slash for no articles. We know that some words, uh, some nouns, coming without any articles. So if there is no article, pl please add the slash. This is amazing book. So book singular. And it's unknown, and we have amazing, so we will say what? An amazing buck. Okay, if it is, this is buck without amazing, what will you say? Yes, this is a buck. I'm planning to travel to Bahamas next summer. Bahamas, what are Bahamas? Yes, islands, islands. So, we said with plural islands, we will use the. I'm planning to travel to the Bahamas next summer. Nobody lives moon. Nobody lives on moon. We have to say on moon. So, yes, nobody lives on the moon because everyone know moon. It's already known on the moon. Vegetarian do not eat meat. They eat vegetables and fruits. Okay, here we are talking about general uh, food like meat, vegetable, fruits. Do we need to add any articles? 
No, don't add any articles, just like this. Vegetarian do not eat meat, they eat vegetables and fruits. Fruit, sorry. Choose a, a or a an or the or nothing. Again, there is book in my backpack. So, book, as we said before, a book in my backpack. The book is very heavy. Here we are repeating book for the second time. So, it's already mentioned before. For this, we will say that it's non. Okay. Do you know where I left car keys? It's not just keys, it's the it's car keys, so it's non. Okay. We de we define them. Car keys. So we will add the because it is non. Don't make him greasy hamburger. Make him healthy salad instead. So here we are talking about the hamburger or hamburger. So what's the suitable article? Because we are mentioning it for the first time. Yes. Ah, and a ah, healthy salad instead. Don't make him a greasy hamburger, make him a healthy salad instead. Okay, now we come to the quantifiers. Do you know what do you mean by quantifiers? Please go back to the reference of your book. You will find a full explanation. Again, go and watch the episodes, the previous episodes. We discuss them in details. Okay, here you have to choose the right quantifiers, some, few, or a, as an article. They have found a, some, few gold in that old mine. Okay, gold. Is it singular or plural? Is it countable or uncountable? For sure, gold is uncountable. You know what do you mean by countable and uncountable. Since it is uncountable, we will go with what? Yes, some. Because few and a uh, are for countable nouns. I have some, few, a few homework to do for tomorrow. Homework. Are they countable or uncountable? Yes, they are uncountable. So we will go with what? Some homework to do. What's the difference between few and a few? More than a few. So if a few it means three, few means just one. I need a few, a little, many, time to think. What about time? Is it countable or uncountable? Yes, for sure. Uncountable. You cannot count it. So I need a little time to think because little go with uncountable. I want sugar in my tea and a uh, biscuits. Use little or few. Sugar, countable or uncountable? Uncountable. So it will go with little. What about biscuits? One biscuits, two biscuits. Yes, it's countable. So it will take what? Few. I want little sugar in my tea and a few biscuits. Houses in need new of modernization. Okay, need a new decoration or okay. Houses countable or uncountable? Yes, countable. There is S plural S, so countable. So we will go with few. People comes to my party. People countable or uncountable? Yes, they are countable. So we will say few people come to comes to my party, okay? By this we come to the vocab vocabulary section and in module one, unit one and unit two, we talk about word related to travel and tourism, page eight and 11. Words relate related to weather, page 18. Adjectives describing people and places, page 16. Then, adjectives ending in ed or ing, page 21. Again and again, we discuss them in details in the previous lesson. Please go back to them or go uh, to these pages and you will find 
full explanations, pictures, examples, text. Okay. We will do some exercises about the adjectives ending in ed or ing because I want you to gain this skill very well. First, remember that adjective ending with ing expressing the situation itself, while adjectives ending with ed expressing the feeling, your feeling or the, the speaker feeling. Okay. My nephew was amusing or amused by the clown. Your nephew. So, you are expressing the feeling of him. So, yes, amused. It's so frustrating or frustrated. No matter how much I study, I cannot seem to remember this vocabulary. Okay. So, it is so. It is so. The situation is so. So, yes, frustrating. The situation is very frustrating. Not he is the one who is frustrated. The lesson is so boring or bored. I hope my lesson is not. So, here we are talking about what? The lesson. So, we will go with what? Yes, I-N-G. Boring. Boring. I am feeling depressed. Or, I am feeling depressing. So, I'm going to go home, eat some chocolate, and go to bed early with a good book. So, this is her way to get rid of depression. So, what about you? Okay. I am feeling. This is my feeling. So, depressed or depressing? Yes, depressed. I thought her new idea was absolutely Fascinated or fascinating? Here we are talking about what? What are we describing? Idea. So, since we are describing the situation, not the feeling, we will go with ing. So, the answer is fascinating. I thought her new idea was absolutely fascinating. This math problem is so confusing or confused. Can you help me? So, what are we talking about here? Describing what? Me or the math problem? The math problem. So, the situation. Confusing. The math problem is so confusing. I hate long flights. I am always really bored or boring. I am. So, is it my feeling or the situation? It is my feeling. So, I will use... Bored, not boring. The journey was exhausting or exhausted. Twelve, twelve hour, twelve hours by bus. The journey is not my feeling. It's the journey itself. Yes, exhausting. The plane began to move in a rather alarming or alarmed way. Way, so it's not feeling, it's situation, way. Yes, alarming. He was frightening or frightened when he saw the spider. He, yes, frightened, frightened. Okay, by this, we come to the end of the grammar section. And now we will move to the writing. Remember. In each module, you have two writing tasks. Most of the time, one is an email or letter. The second one is an essay. And remember that module one was about describing people and places, events. Okay? So, let's go to writing an email based on prompts. Here is the email format. Okay? So, remember that you have to start the email with the greetings. Dear Eric. And it's on the left hand. Okay? On the left hand side of the page. Not on the right. No. On the left. And don't forget to put a comma after the name. Okay. Notice that. Dear start with capital for sure because it's the first letter in the word. 
and Eric to start with capital because names starting or because names start with capital. Okay, then you will go to the main part of the paragraph of the email, which is the reason why do you write this email? Okay, two or three paragraphs. Okay, introduction paragraph, then the main paragraphs. Be careful, you have to start with capital letters. And after each follow stop, start with capital letters. Okay. And as it's written here, you have to write in blocked paragraphs, leaving a blank space lines in between the paragraphs. When you end the paragraph, leave a blank, then go to other the other paragraph and do the same. Okay. At the end, you will sign off. For sure, you will write a sentence like, Hope uh, to see you soon. Uh, be uh, take care. Goodbye for now. Okay. Then write your name in. Uh, sorry, on the bottom uh, side of the email. Again, left side. Okay. So signing off the left hand side of the page. Use your first name or full name as appropriate. Remember that when you write an email about invitation, you will need some linking words or phrases, okay? Here you have some phrases to help you to write such an email. For invite, when you want to invite, like I would like to invite you to, then if you accept, if you are replying and accept the invitation, you can write, you can use one of these phrases. That would be great. I just love the idea. How could I say no? Okay. If you want to decline an invitation because it doesn't work with you, use one of these polite phrases. Like, I am afraid I cannot come because I am sorry, but... Okay. Apologize. I'm sorry that... I'm sorry about... Okay. If you want to express enthusiasm, Okay, you are so excited to do the thing. You can use such use such a phrases. Sorry, it's fantastic that it will be great to. I'm so excited that. Okay, if you want to thank someone, you would write. I'd like to thank you. Thanks for many thanks for or I want to thank you. Okay, if you want to express your preference, I would rather would I would prefer or I think would be better. I don't care whether we are, okay? The second writing task is writing an essay describing a place. I want you to take care of these points. First, you will start your essay. When you want to describe a place by introduction, you will give general information about the place you are going to describe and refer what to make the place interesting or why you are going to write about it. Why did you choose this place to write about? Then main part, two or three paragraphs, describe the place, the sites, the things to do, and give your impression or describe your feelings. Conclusion, you will sum up your opinion by making a general comments or giving your feelings. More than this, please note to use a catchy title, okay? Think about the purpose of the articles in order to write an appropriate style. Is it formal? Is it informal? Organize the article in paragraphs which describe or give example of the topic. Always support your essay with example and details. Use lovely, colorful language, beautiful language, variety of words, phrases, expressions, direct and indirect question. Okay. Finally, comment on the topic or give your opinion. Thanks and thank you very, very much for watching. Please be safe, take care and see you soon.